All right, so Darius versus Olaf. Uh, it's a matchup that has been around for a while. Uh, back when Darius got reworked, it was a pretty common matchup because Darius was commonly a uh, pick ban. Since then, Darius has been nerfed a few times. Obviously, it's been a few years with the patches, so the matchups changed quite a bit. But in general, Darius is quite range limited. Um, he only has Q and E for sort of ranged abilities. Um, and Olaf obviously has his own Q, which is much higher range. But just before we get to that, we have a quick invade. I see Lulu, and everyone else sees Lulu, so I go for the kill. We have a permaslow because I have Olaf Q, and she flashes away, but she flashes away too late, and we kill her. Uh, the only notable things I did there was I queued from here into the bush so that if they're stacking we can see it. Um, and then I used my corrupting potion as soon as I lost any mana. Because I'm going to recall anyway, so I might as well just use the corrupting potion as soon as possible so that I have as much health and mana as possible if we do get into an actual fight. And we did get into an actual fight, except, you know, it was just one person so it didn't really matter in the end. If it was more people, the health and mana can make a difference, but there's not really any downside to, to using those potions early if you're definitely going to recall or die anyway. So I hop into lane, I just quickly tra check Tribush to make sure he's not going to randomly be cheesing me from there. Um, and then I just hide for a little while to see what he's doing. He ends up doing the same. Um, I'm just going to toggle it to our own vision, because that's a bit more useful to talk about. Uh, so after a little while, I, I hop into the lane, and then I make sure I get the CS. I managed to line it up so that he gets hit as well. Unfortunately that does proc his Conqueror because area is a damage over time effect. Um, but just generally speaking, it's a lot similar to the Camille matchup for those of you who've watched that VOD. You just basically constantly uh, hit him with Q until he gets kind of low and then you can all in him. Um, if he tries to trade back like he did just before with... Um, I, I hit a, a minion and he hit me twice, he actually took nearly as much damage from my minions as anything else. Sorry, not anything else, that doesn't make any sense. He nearly took as much damage from um, my minions as I did from him, so that didn't really matter. Uh, and right here, I have the wave pushing slightly towards me, and also Darius is like a tiny bit low, missing a couple hundred health, so he's sort of in a position where at least he can gank him. He decides not to flash here, which I personally think is kind of weird. Uh, if he flashed the Lee Sin Q, there's a reasonable chance he would have either survived or burnt our flashes as well. Um, potentially he was just wanting to not lose his flash if he thought he was going to die, but in any case, he died. Uh, Lee Sin pings for his TP, suggesting that Lee Sin wants to gank him again if he TPs in. But he ends up not TPing, he just walks back to lane, I'm guessing, based on the fact that he doesn't appear immediately with his teleport. Yeah, he's just walking in. So that gives me a bit of a, a further XP advantage, because he hasn't been here since he died, obviously. He, like, he hasn't TP'd in, so a bunch of minions have died while he was away. So I ding level 4 and he's still level 2. He just dings level 3 now, but that's still an entire level advantage in the short term. Which means I can bully him around quite a bit. He gets 5 stacks, and then I become a little bit scared. It's possible I can win the fight, but I don't want to risk it. And I haven't TP'd, so like, I'm perfectly happy to just take that trade. And then I can come back with health advantage, and he has to either back and TP, or he'll die. He chooses to sort of half-heartedly back. I see that, I immediately go for a flash Q. Again, for a reason I don't understand, he holds his flash. I think that was the situation where he almost definitely would have survived if he just flashed. So that, that was kind of a freebie. But, you know, if you think about how it would more commonly play out with Darius flashing, that's still not an awful trade for me. Because um, I have a lot more chase down potential than he does. Uh, my jungler's Lee Sin versus their jungler's Amumu. So my jungler has a lot more uh, gank pressure than their jungler. Trading flash in that situation where you as a laner have more pressure and your jungler also has more pressure is 
not a bad idea. And you saw me just there dodge the E by cutting back and forth, and you saw me just there, you th I threw a Q but like a little bit delayed, um, trying to predict his movement so that I can track him a bit better. If you throw it like as soon as possible each time, then they're just going to keep dodging it. But if you make them sort of mind gate themselves by, by waiting out a little bit, then you can avoid that from happening and you can get a few more hits onto them. Right now I haven't seen a move in a little while. Uh, Darius is reasonably healthy. I don't have flash and this ward is okay but not amazing so I play safe for a little bit. It doesn't seem like anything's happening so I managed to find an all-in onto Darius. Um, I had level 6, he didn't. Once again he held his flash. I'm not really sure why he keeps doing that. Um, the first time I watched this replay, I thought maybe, you know, maybe his button is broken or something. It's unlikely, but, you know, it can happen. But at some point in the game, he does actually flash. I checked, so it's not actually that. So at the moment, I have... How much gold? I don't know. I had some gold, and now I have less gold. And I decided to buy these items. I probably should have brought this up a bit earlier. Um, I'm guessing... Wait, we don't have to guess. Let's just quickly go back and check what happened. No, before that. Okay. Okay, so my first pack I went for Doran's Blade and Longsword. Um, if you... Against the matchups where you want to poke them out, you generally want to make sure you get some AD on your first back if you're doing well. That way you can, you know, poke them out harder, make it a lot more difficult for them to um, go aggressive because they'll be low health. Um, and then the health from the Drawn's Blade and the little bit of sustain from the Drawn's Blade just, again, makes it a little bit harder for them to win an all-in after you poke them down with the AD bonus. So when I go back, I have... 1200 gold, just shy of 1300 gold, so I buy Kindle Gem and Boots. Um, that, this is basically Olaf's strongest point in the laning phase in my opinion. Um, it's when Olaf has some AD, he has some health, he has some mobility from the Boots, um, and he has some CDR from the Kindle Gem. And this is only made stronger by the fact that I have Doran's Blade as well, it's not just um, like Longsword Kindle Gem Boots, it's the Doran's Blade as well. <laughs> Vlad gets extremely lucky, but in any case, this is sort of, this is everything Olaf wants in the laning phase. Um, these are all the things that combined together give him good trades and uh, good all-ins. So, short trades are good because of the AD, longer trades are good because of the mobility and CDR, and all-ins are strong because of the health. Plus everything else I mentioned before. Uh, there's really two options here about how to play the lane from this point because Darius is too weak to um, straight up force an all in. You can either keep the wave roughly neutral and deny him CS in the middle of the wave, or you can push up. Um, this will deny a little bit of CS under the turret, but it will also leave you a lot more vulnerable to ganks. I'm personally less worried about the ganks, and I'm pretty confident that I can absorb um, kill pressure because it's a Mimu jungle and I have this ward here. If he ganks from try, I feel like that's going to be really obvious for Darius. Like, Darius will, will have an obvious tell on that. Um, and if he ganks from here, I'm pretty sure I can just run away. If Darius uh, hooks me, I can just ult out, and then the slow dissipates, I can slow Darius, and then, you know, not much happens. Uh, I go for an all in here, I mess up slightly, because the movie comes in and instantly dies. I messed up slightly because I cancelled some stuff by, by queuing things oddly. Uh, if we just rewatch that in a bit slower speed. You can see he wants to go for the CS. So I go for an auto, I go for a Q, and then I ult for the move speed. I had an auto going. Uh, and this is actually something that's really frustrating about playing Olaf. I had an auto going, 
and then I activated my W, and the W actually can cancel your auto, which is kind of retarded. It's not an auto attack reset, it just cancels an auto attack in progress, and then makes you auto attack again with the increased uh, attack speed. So right there, I cancelled two autos, I had a regular auto attack, and then after that I had a W auto attack, which cancelled the first auto attack before it finished, and then after that I put out a Q. And the Q cancelled the W auto attack because I didn't let it finish. In the end it didn't matter, but that's just, it's a tiny little thing, the uh, W cancelling your auto attack, which is usually not going to make a difference, but if, if the fight's like super tight and one of you survives on 50 health, that W auto attack actually can be the difference between living and dying. So if the fight's really close, just something to keep in mind. Um, try to use your W not in the middle of an existing auto attack. Let the auto attack finish and then use your W. Um, and the same thing applies if you're not in a fight. Maybe you're just pushing the turret or you're trying to W the wave for more health. Let your auto attack finish before you activate the W. Right there, I, you saw me do it correctly. I let my auto attack finish and then I use my W. Um, and then it doesn't waste time cancelling the auto attack. Uh, so my pusher is quite aggressive, but like, I know that I'm pretty safe. Even though he has Boots and Phage, which is like Darius's maximum mobility for this period of the game. Um, I have my own Boots. I have um, a slow, we both have flash. If he flashes onto me like he did just there, I can just flash away. So uh, the only real threat for me there was if a Mumu decided to come back and kill me, which was definitely a possibility. Uh, what I did was a bit on the greedy side, but uh, once again, I was pretty confident about um, just using my flash to dodge. Lucin decides to go for hashtag big plays and it doesn't work out very well. And in any case, I finished my cleaver. Um, I don't really have any supporting armor or MR, but at this stage of the game, I'm chucking them pretty hard. You see, each time I chuck a Q out here, it's really pushing them back quite a bit. So with Caitlyn and Karma as well, this is a really good siege squad. At least for this stage of the game. Um, so quickly talking about why I'm actually in mid lane, it's because top lane wasn't being pushed towards me. Um, when you have a lead on Olaf, it's really important to convert the lead into leads for everyone else. Like, you need to get objectives, or you need to uh, wander to other lanes to gank. And the timing on when you do that is whenever your lane is not coming into your turret. Like, if the wave is here, and it's even, and the enemy... Um, top laner has just recalled, that's a good time to do it. Oh, as I quickly go for a fight. Uh, so right here, they came onto me. As I just sadly die here. Maybe we should go back and rewatch that. Okay, so... I'm clearing out the ward. We're going for Dragon. We see Jace, we see Darius. And then we see the duo lane. I take a bunch of damage from the Kaiser Q, and then I decide I can probably win this fight. It's unlikely Umumu is going to reinforce because the duo lanes, um, they've just sort of walked into lane, they haven't really tried to trap me in by coming around here, so it's unlikely Umumu is here. Um, I go for Lulu instead of Kaiser because Lulu is going to try to save Kaiser, but Lulu's less able to save herself while she's super duper squishy because she hasn't built any health. Um, so I do the standard um, run forward um, to sort of feign their safety, like they think I'm just running away, and then Q backwards and ult for the move speed and damage. Let's slow this down to half speed. So one of the main problems here is that Lulu had Ignite, um, but also Kaiser does quite a bit of damage. 
which is unfortunate for me. So between the healing ignite, there was just a lot to get through. Um, if I had my flash, I, like they didn't have their flashes, so this is a bit of a, a moot point. But if I had my flash, I could have flashed onto Lulu to just to close the gap a little bit more, um, get my damage out faster, and take less damage from her. Because even though she died, she did actually do an okay amount of damage before she died, because she has a bit of AP from her items. Um, and when I ult, you can see my magic resistant armor are not the best. So I'm, I'm actually pretty squishy. And then my ult runs out. And I don't... I wasn't tracking her cooldowns perfectly. I didn't know if I could just walk away here or not. Um, and since I didn't know if I could walk away, I went for a risky fight. At this point, I'm not expecting to win the fight. Um, my, you can see my Q slow sort of runs out, and I have to do a, a minimum range Q while in... Um, like melee range. Surprisingly, she doesn't decide to auto attack me, which would have definitely killed me. Um, so, technically, I could have won this fight by just auto attacking her and then eing her because she apparently didn't want to auto attack me. But realistically, she should have auto attacked me before I finished an auto attack and an E. So in my mind, I only had enough time to get the E off, not the auto attack and the E. I do that by myself a little bit of time with the uh, stopwatch, even though I know it's probably not going to do anything. Um, and then I'm, I'm just hoping she'll either get into range or I can pick up my Q and throw it again. Um, when I come out of the stopwatch, it looks to me like I have a better chance by just running at her and seeing if I can get one last auto. I can't get it, so I end up throwing away a little bit of an advantage. Um, I absorb two people, which lets us, lets us get the drag for free, but I also could have absorbed the two people without going for the fight, so that was kind of uh, a little bit too aggro on my part. Um, I think without the ninja tab eye, I probably shouldn't have gone for the fight, just because I would take too much damage um, while I was in ult. Like, if Lulu had exhaust, maybe it would have been okay, because I would have healed a lot more. Um, it would have taken me a moment longer to kill Lulu, but I would have been healthier, so I think it would have been worth our trade-off. Okay, right here is really crap. So, I've... In this situation, I was consciously tracking where Lulu would be. And she had not come to top lane. And obviously this ward saw that if she would have come here, I would have seen it. So at this point, I know that she's, you know, she's somewhere else. She's somewhere else in the fog of war. She's not top lane. So I go for a teleport. I know this is a free kill onto Kaisa, even though I don't have ult. So let's just play it at a half speed. Go for the kill. And then Lulu flashes in and Kaisa flashes out. And if we rewind to take a look, my tracking was actually correct as I toggle the vision. My tracking was actually correct. Lulu actually does not go top lane. Lulu comes out here. And for some weird reason she goes bot, but then decides no, I'm not going bot. I'm actually just going to ward here. And then I'm just going to walk to top lane. So my, my tracking was... Roughly correct. Lulu did in fact not go top lane. It's just I don't understand why she had this weird rotation um, Where she She has this Warded so like we can't come in through here. She has this warded so we can't come in through here and Jace is mid lane So the only thing that could possibly kill Kaisa right now is someone coming from here Or someone coming from this ward which they don't know about because they didn't see me put it down as far as I know and like Kaisa didn't react to me until I showed up inside a vision range, so clearly she didn't know about the teleport. And yet for some reason Lulu decided to rotate, so that it basically just sucks to be me. Um, I made a calculation, uh, I followed the information I was given very well, and then Lulu just decided to rotate after accomplishing nothing in the other lanes. She just got a ward down. So. 
my aggression there was very calculated, didn't pan out. Um, I still think it was the right thing to do in that situation. In any case, we're easily far ahead, so even though we're getting outnumbered, we're still going even in these outnumbered fights. Uh, so 3 versus 2 in the bot lane, and even though it's 3 versus 2, we go 2 for 2. Sorry, not 2 for 2, we go uh, 1 for 2, we actually win the trade. And then Darius is like, no, can't get that, so he, he gives up. And then he does the karma, and it's really sad. Bye Darius. Uh, so, what have I built? I've built nothing, because I didn't have any money, because I teleported in and immediately died. So I just picked up a couple control wards. Yeah, I'm heading to top wave, because the wave is a little bit stacked, it needs to be cleared out. Um, there's not really any major objective, there's kind of Rift Herald, and that's about it. Um, mid lane here is down, and then there's just the two side lanes. That are sort of the next objectives. And Baron's ages away because it's quite early into the game. So there's really again, there's really not that much to be doing. I start off on the blue buff after sticking a ward down and then decide probably not worth going for it if they're willing to contest it this hard. Fortunately for me, Amumu was squishy as hell because he's going for an AP build. So he doesn't feel comfortable letting blue buff hit him if I'm also hitting him with Q's and he just backs away, I waste a bit of his time. Bot lane is still pushing around their bot lane a little bit. Um, not as much as they could have because I gave Kaiser a couple of kills um, which let it finish an item but it's we, we still have a, a pretty good lead. If you look at the goals of everyone uh, bot lane does still have uh, about a thousand each on top of their counterparts. Uh, I have a couple thousand on top of Darius. Lee Sin has nearly three thousand, and Vlad has another thousand ish. Uh, so right here we see that uh, Vlad's getting two man. We don't actually have vision of Lulu at the time, but we know that there's Darius here, and I think we might have seen Kaiser here as well. I'm not sure. So we know we have a new rifle advantage because this is happening and shockingly Vlad is winning because Amuru has built full squishy and that's not the best idea I've ever seen. I, I understand why he did it because the rest of his team is AD but his team also didn't really have a dedicated tank and Darius was behind so he wasn't very tanky and it kind of it cost them a lot to not have that tank while everyone just sort of dies and they can't afford to have anyone engage. So Lee Sin went to do the Rift Herald while the 2v1 bot was happening. Um, we used the Rift Herald to push. Since they had two people bot, we still have a numerical advantage top. We used a numerical advantage with the Rift Herald to just push down the wave. Keep pushing for a little bit, Ripshell dies, that wave is thinning out. Um, it's really difficult to push Nexus Tarots unless you have a massive advantage or a Baron or something else to help you push. So we sort of half-heartedly rotate to mid, but the whole wave is cleared out before we get there, so that kind of falls through. Plus they have five people again, we don't have Vlad, um, and we all have a bit of cash on us, so we're sort of looking to buy. Uh, yeah, we all have about a grand or more on average, so good time to go back and buy. And then we can come back later and uh, the next objective would probably be Dragon. And since I know that, and I'm, maybe I'm looking for a little bit of gold as well. Yeah, I'm looking for a little bit of gold. So I, I can't quite finish either Stone Plate or Titanic Hydra. So I'm just looking to get that amount of money before I recall. Right here, Amumu dies because the red buff hits him, which is great. Um, so this fight is really weird because they they collapsed really hard onto Vlad and then still lost the fight. Even though we weren't really looking to get a fight like that, that is so far behind, and it's Vlad, so he's you know he's pretty good at surviving um, for a few seconds on his own when he's outnumbered. 
while doing a shit ton of damage to everyone else while he gets chased. Especially again, they have no tanks. So we just use that kill to push up another wave. And now we have two minion waves coming in. There's two waves of super minions. Um, well, this wave will eventually have super minions. Um, and that just means the next thing to do is to go bot and then push the fuck out of that and end the game. Chase is a rude person. He decides to interrupt my recall, so I just walk back a bit further. Uh, I have two options for items at this point that I'm thinking about. Uh, I have enough gold to either finish my Titanic Hydra or go for Stone Plate. Um, I'm pretty sure I decided to go for Stone Plate, but I'm not 100% sure. It's been a little while since I played this game. I do go for Stone Plate, there you go. Um, we have plenty of damage. Lee Sin has also built some damage. Um, just in case we needed more, which we don't, but he's built more anyway. So really the the most likely way we lose a fight is because people die. And how do you prevent dying? You build durability. And stone plate's basically the best durability item for getting in the middle of everything um, as a second or third item. AD armor and ADMR is a really big deal, especially when Olaf is ulting because he loses out on his normal armor and MR bonus. For some weird reason, Vlad goes in and just dies. He forces like 1v4. And again, just dies. I'm keeping Jace away, which isn't the best trade. Because I'm slightly ahead of Jace. But... You know, these guys should have been able to push safely, slowly, with just their 4-man unit. Vlad, I don't know, he just got greedy and decided to dig around because they're winning so hard. Um... I'm just pushing Jace around. I want the minions to do their work, so I'm just sort of staying back. I'm not hitting the turret. I'm just letting the minions do their job until everyone backs off, and then I can hit the turret safely. There's a funky fight in the bottom side of the map. Obviously, we win that because we're ahead. Um, at this stage, I'm, I'm mostly just sticking around, letting the minions do the work. Um, you don't need to do anything aggressive or needlessly aggressive. You don't need to do anything too risky, you can just go for the minion end. And that's basically it. There's really not much they can do at this point. They're really far behind. They have no way to reliably win a fight. If they force it, they don't really have a way to reliably win the fight, even if they don't force it. If we're forcing onto them, unless Vlad suicides like that, or someone else suicides like that, we kind of just auto-win a fight. So, the, t the key takeaways for the Darius matchup... Um, you want to go... well, I, there's more than one way to play it. My preferred way to play it is to go a poke rune, such as Aerie or Comet. I personally prefer Aerie these days. I used to prefer Comet, but I tried both and I now prefer Aerie. Um, some people prefer Conqueror against every matchup. I, I it can work if you play to its strengths. Um, the main issue, in my opinion, with it is that you can only go in. You can't you can't realistically poke someone down enough with just Conqueror because you don't have the extra damage of Airy. So they'll have an extra. Uh, what, 100 health, and that just leaves you more vulnerable to getting ganked because it'll take extra long to kill that person. Plus, Conqueror, you need to set up, you need to be constantly in combat for it to work. Um, and that just sort of denies you the instant bam, go in sort of thing, which you can get with Aerie because Aerie has amazing uptime, which is the main reason I prefer it over Comet. Um, so, yeah, key takeaway poke Darius down. Uh, you outrange him, so just stay out of Q range, stay out of E range until he's slightly poked down. Once he's slightly poked down, you can play a bit more aggressive because you can win a fight if he's, say, 70% health and you're 100% health. Or if he's 50% health and you're 75, you should be able to win as well. Um, if you both hit 6, just remember his burst goes up a lot. So you might want to make sure the, the um, like the the difference between your health is a bit higher, but at the same time your ult also gives you a lot more damage, um, and since you can't be slowed, 
by his E or his W, you also have a lot more a lot more power there. So, uh, as with a lot of other matchups, outrange them, poke them, all in them, and then once you have the advantage in the lane, rotate to other lanes to keep an eye on your wave. When the wave is pushing out, like say you've destroyed the turret and the wave's over here, that's a great time to take a look at mid, take a look at bot, see if you can get something done there. Um, especially if you have TP in your back pocket, you can just TP back to lane, even if nothing ends up happening. Um, maybe you can ask your jungler to do dragon with you. There's plenty of stuff you can do uh, outside of the lane. And if you get an, an advantage as Olaf, again, try to push it. Um, don't just keep it to your lane, otherwise you'll probably get outscaled and you have a good chance of losing. So, hope everyone else win as well. <laughs>